And now I want to address the recent recession, whether it's current or not, I don't know, but it's definitely recent, 2008. And, um, and what happened? Well, suppose that initially you had, um, we had our economy on point A here, and, and the economy is hit by a recession. We know that we're going to slide down the beverage curve. Now, if we're just sliding from A to B, is a normal response of a flexible economy to a recession. We stay close to the axis, which means that we're getting more unemployed because there is recession, but compared with the level of vacancies, we have not much more. If on the other hand, we start moving out as well at the same time, go to point C, it means that something else is going wrong with this economy when it gets hit by the negative shock. And um, what happens in recession? <coughs> well, equally, if you are at point B and the economy is flexible and, and there is recovery, you are going to jump up to point A quickly. You are going to stay close to the axis. If uh, your economy is not flexible, you are going to move out when the recovery is coming or just about point B and stay around there. And um, I hope you like the story of the arrow to the right of B. It took me ages to <laughs> to write down your slides. Um, and you'll be astonished how, how economies fit into this, uh, I was astonished at this, how economies fit into this style of story that I did, you know, this here and this. So let's look at some um, economies, how they responded to the recession. Here is Britain responding to the current recession. This year, in 2000, January 2008, uh, recession hits. Uh, April 2009 is the end of the negative shock. This is an A to B movement. Look how close it stays to the axis. Unemployment goes up from 5.5% uh, to 7.5%. All very well. Since then, nothing is happening. The economy is just stuck in the recession. You can't say that things go worse since then. What you can say is that it's complete stationarity. Nothing happening. Um, if, if you look deeper into what's happening to, uh, to Britain, of course, what's, hap what's happening down here is that the private sector is trying to recover, and then the government is hitting the public sector on the head, <laughs> reducing current spending, so one is upsetting the other, and the economy is just stationary. There is, there's a redistribution between public and private sector jobs, but uh, the economy is stationary on the day. <coughs> now, in contrast to that, look what happened to Britain in the last recession we had, and here it is. You know, the, the negative shock now is between is, is, is 79, down to 80 is the A to B movement I have. And, and look at what happens after 80. The economy is just moving out and out and it's trying to recover, but unemployment is getting worse, 81, 84. This is, this is the perfect example of an economy with severe structural problems. It, instead, of, instead of recovery after 81, taking you back to 79 here, yeah, reducing unemployment, unemployment keeps going up. And of course, that's the famous case of, uh, of the Thatcher era of, of uh, lots of strikes between the unions and employers and, and the monetary policy that um, increased the exchange rate so much that uh, that disease hit the manufacturing industry. And, and that caused this structural problem. The demise of manufacturing, in fact, began there. Um, now, in contrast, look at the United States in the 80s. It's a perfectly flexible economy again, responding. You know, maybe unemployment went up in the recession of 82, 83, but it came back very quickly, 83, 84. It's the A to B movement up and down that I pointed out. In contrast, look at the United States in the current recession. Uh, January 2008, April 2009, exactly the same month as Britain, by the way, the negative shock. It's sliding down here, A to B movement, but now recovery comes after April 2009. What's happening? Instead of going back up there, we're just going up there. You know, vacancies increasing, but not being taken up. Now, this is an economy that is telling you, at this level, is telling you that, um, that there, is a, uh, some, there are some serious problems in the economy here. That is of a structural nature. Worse, worse off than, than Britain. Not completely clear yet, but there are at least two things that point out to things going wrong. One of them is the, is the unconditional extension of unemployment benefits that uh, the Obama administration brought in a couple of years ago, that, uh, one year ago, that unemployment benefits in 
increased unconditionally from um, six months to two years, I think. I'm not against increasing unemployment benefits, but there should be some kind of conditionality on job search. Um, and, and the second and, um, and probably more important is that the United States economy was always flexible because of a lot of labor mobility. <coughs> but that labor mobility is now restricted by the housing market because the housing market is so difficult to sell your house that you don't move. And, and, and this is also where behavioral economics might help because, because one of the main findings that is related to this is that pe people, never like, people never want to sell their house if the price they can get is below the highest price that the house experienced, which of course is completely irrational, but that's how people are. You know, like if you had a house that was worth one million and now you can only sell it for 800,000 euro, you say, no, no, I could get one million for this house last year, I'm going to wait until the price goes back to one million before I sell. But that's a very bad for the labor market. So, so one way of, uh, of increasing the uh, um, the flexibility of the U.S. market is to, um, is to educate American householders that it's not too bad taking a loss on your house when the housing market is falling. <laughs>